Hi everyone and welcome to the video. So this is going to be my labor and delivery story for my second born, Jace, who arrived eight days ago now on the 16th of, oh, sorry, on the 16th of June. So oh, um, this deliver, this birth was overall a really positive experience for me, especially compared to my first birth where I had a lot of, um, like I found that one to, to be not such a positive overall experience. There was a lot going on with that one. And I wanted to share this for two reasons. One, because I found it really helpful for myself leading up to my due date to see positive birth stories on YouTube. I just found it helps to take away some anxiety and make me feel positive about the upcoming birth. And the second reason is just because it was such a nice experience that I do want to document it. He's actually crying, so I'm just gonna go grab him and I will be back. Okay, so I've just got Jace here with me and he'll probably just fall asleep. I have got crazy Kramer hair going on today, but anyway, this is not a bad effort for eight days postpartum, but let's just get back into it. Um, so I just wanna do a disclaimer for you. When I was watching positive labor, positive delivery videos, sometimes I would get a little bit agitated when people would be like, oh, and it was horrendous, you know, because I was trying to feel calm about the whole thing. But then the fact of the matter is natural childbirth is not going to be pain free in the majority of cases. But that doesn't mean that the overall experience can't end up being a positive one. So, and it's all about preparation and a bit of mindset and things like that. For me, I did a lot of reading. I read Ina May Gaskin's Guide to Childbirth, which I think helped prepare me for the actual process. And just watching a lot of videos and understanding the process of labor. So um, uh, just a, a little bit of backstory for you on my first birth with Jed. Um, with him, it was a spontaneous delivery. I labored at home for quite a long time. I had called the hospital a couple of times and they encouraged me to stay home. When I eventually got to the hospital, I was nine centimeters dilated and, and I asked for some pain relief, but they said, your baby will be here soon. So we opted not to do that. However, he was posterior, his head was jutted up, so he was a bit stuck. They ended up doing like a bit of manual manipulation and it was a vacuum delivery. And um, my overall experience from that was just sort of a feeling of being out of control and didn't feel like I received that instruction from the hospital. So this experience that I had though was with Jace was definitely a positive experience. With my firstborn, I found that for weeks after his arrival, I would just be in the shower, like crying, sort of thinking about the experience. And it just wasn't great. Like I, I felt like it was a kind of traumatic experience, but um, this, this time around, I find myself reliving the experience but with um happiness and real sense of pride and satisfaction at how it all went so 
now that you have the background let's just get into how it went so I had gestational diabetes for this pregnancy like I did for the last and when you have that they they like to induce you at around 38 39 weeks um, because of risk of the baby being large um, which was the was what they recommended for me I had said that I would like to wait for a spontaneous delivery um, I had a stretch and sweep at 38 and a half weeks and but we scheduled a um, induction for when I was 39 weeks and three days I thought he would arrive by then but he didn't all through that week I was having um, contractions he's asleep now <laughs> I was having contractions um, I had actually thought that I was going to go into labor a few times through the night but it never eventuated I feel like part of that for me was stress I had um, a, a few issues around childcare for Jed while we'd be in hospital and I think that was just weighing on my mind and kind of preventing me from relaxing enough but either that or he just wasn't ready to come out anyway so I had been tossing back uh, tossing up back and forth whether to go ahead with the induction or to push it back because I really in my head wanted to go into spontaneous labor I feared induction because of um, uh, the cascade of interventions that you hear about like the fact that it can be come on super hard and strong and therefore you want pain relief and therefore with pain relief become I'm not going to go into it but basically there's with uh, inductions there's like a high risk of you needing further interventions anyway anyway I decided to keep the induction date because it ended up just being the most practical for us with care basically and I was kind of ready to just get things happening so here's how the day went um, I had to arrive at the hospital at 7 30 in the morning on Tuesday the 16th and my husband actually stayed home until uh, sorry no I had to arrive at 6 30 so I drove to the hospital by myself uh, I felt so sick like I was really nervous um, and then Lindsay came and joined me <coughs> at 7 30 we just wanted to get Jed settled <coughs> excuse me into the day <coughs> because it was my a friend that was looking after him and uh, he hasn't had that before so I just thought nothing's gonna happen by 7 30 so that was our plan it was definitely weird arriving at the hospital by myself like when I got to the desk and I said I'm here for my induction they were sort of like oh and do you have like anyone with you today and they were quite relieved when I said I did anyway um, so I got to the hospital, I went into one of the birthing rooms and they just uh, like did some ops, like took my temperature, um, blood pressure and put the baby monitor on and things like that. Um, at that stage in the morning before having anything done, I was, I was already three centimeters dilated, but I had been the week before, which I found out can just happen, um, especially with uh, pregnancies like beyond your first so anyway we I discussed a plan with the midwives and we agreed that they would break my waters and that we would wait until lunchtime to see if my labor was able to just start from that before we tried um, a, a pitocin or syntocin I think they call it here so that was the plan anyway so that's what we did waited for, for Lindsay to arrive and then they did the little um, internal broke the waters which felt really really weird it was like a big gush of liquid it was gross um, the internal examination didn't hurt for me it was a little uncomfortable but not it didn't hurt honestly um, and then they said, okay, you can just go for a walk outside, go for a walk around the lake 
and just um, come back in an hour or so and we'll, we'll check to see how baby's going and things like that. Um, so that's what we did. They, so yeah, Lindsay and I went out for a walk. Um, I did some curb walking. I, ha I was having like minor contractions, but nothing painful, nothing to stop me talking or anything like that. Anyway, so we continued like that for the next four hours. Um, in that time, we actually like went to the cafe, got some brunch and had another walk. And uh, again, I was still having little contractions, but nothing major. Um, I was getting kind of frustrated. I kind of wanted to get the ball moving. I was getting a little bored and it was just dragging out. We went back to the room and they, the midwife suggested that I um, hand express some milk, which might help the contractions come along. And that really did. So I was like bouncing on the fit ball, which I found really, really comfortable, uh, comforting for contractions, by the way. It was just sort of um, gave a bit of a weightlessness feeling, just bouncing and rolling um, was, was okay. The little man's in bed now. So yes. So I did the hand expressing for about 20 minutes and then I decided to stop because I've had carpal tunnel in both arms for the third trimester and I literally just couldn't do it anymore. It was too painful. So I stopped that and pretty much as soon as I stopped doing the hand expressing, those contractions subsided. Um, so then I think we went for another walk and things kind of completely seemingly stopped. Um, we came back in at about 11.30 into the room and I got the, the midwife did a check and found that I was four centimeters dilated, but I, and, and I said to them, I think I'm ready to try the Sintocin. I really just wanted to get things going. I didn't, by that stage, it had been a few hours and I didn't want it to keep going on and on like that all day. Also in the back of my head um, was just the fact that my, um, that Jed was at home and that later on, like we had planned on uh, Lindsay being able to go home later or even both of us being able to go home later. So I just had like, time pressure which is sounds weird but that's mum life I guess anyway so at about 10 to 12 I think they put the drip in for the um, syntocin and they put it on the lowest dose to start just to see what happens um, it was kind of weird being hooked up at first but it wasn't too bad honestly um, the whole induction experience wasn't too bad um, compared to what I had built it up in my head to be. Um, the drip was plugged into the wall, but you, but it ran off a battery. So you could move around the room with it. Um, and that's what I did. So I bounced on the ball for a bit. The contractions were sort of coming every few minutes and they were definitely bearable with breathing. Um, so before, um, before birth, before my due date, I had been watching quite a few YouTube videos on hypnobirthing. You've probably come across the term. I didn't delve too far into it. I didn't do a course or anything like that, but I picked up a couple of breathing techniques and that was um, for breathing through contractions to breathe in for four. So one, two, three, four slow breaths and then breathe out for a count of eight and to sort of visualize the breath going right down and like through your birth canal. So, so that was the technique that I was using for every single contraction was to do that, uh, deep breath in, deep breath out throughout the whole, whole thing. And I just found that that really kind of kept me calm and grounded and I would just close my eyes, bounce on the ball or stand up and swing around and just, it just kept me calm basically. Okay, take one million. Okay, so th that's sort of what happened. They were coming every few minutes, but really uh, uh, bearable. I was able to, I just stopped, closed my eyes, dealt with it. Um, wasn't really able to have a conversation through it comfortably, but it was, it was fine. 
So at that point, at some point, it started getting a little more comfortable and I thought I might like to just go in the shower to sort of have a different way of um, pain relief. I thought it might be a bit soothing. Um, the midwife sort of recommended not going in the bath too soon because sometimes that, that apparently can slow things down. So I got my swimming costume on, like my bikini on, which was a bit interesting maneuvering around the drip, but we did it. And then I went in the shower and I just used the handheld thing and held it on my stomach and basically leant against the wall to breathe through the contractions. I was only in the shower for, I want to say about 10, 15 minutes and things started getting stronger. Um, the contractions I noticed were getting, oh, by that time they turned the, the uh, syntocin up because they turn it up after like, I can't remember if it's half an hour or an hour, but they turn it up. They sort of monitor how the progress is going and they turn it up accordingly. So they had turned it up and then I'd been in the shower for about 10 minutes and I noticed that it, like the contractions were still totally bearable but they would they would seem to be like on top of one another every minute so i said to the midwife i'm a bit concerned about how close they are together and she came over and timed them um i said to her at that point i am going to want an epidural i don't need it i said i don't need it right now but i'm just letting you know that i'm going to want it so Going into the whole labor, my whole thing was it would be great if I could have if I could have a natural experience that was a positive one. But if but I was totally open to having an epidural, even though I was aware of risks to myself and the baby, I just wanted to be open to it. So at that stage, obviously the contractions were enough for me to go. Okay, I can see where this is going. I'm going to want that, but it's really hard to know when to get it because you want to keep like act as, labor as active as possible so you're not confined to the bed but you don't want to leave it too long so that it like you can't have it it's really tricky to get the timing right and clearly i haven't mastered that because i didn't end up getting it anyway so I, we decided to try the bath so they they ran the bath and i got in the bath i hated the bath i always sort of regretted not going to go in the bath for my first birth and thought the whole time along that it would be amazing and so like it's such a good feeling um perhaps it would have been a good feeling earlier on in the labor or if it had been a longer labor but for me as soon as i got in the bath it was so uncomfortable it was so hot it was stressful i just didn't like it but it turns out that I was in transition so clearly nothing was going to be comfortable um so i want to say i was in the bath for about five minutes and then the contractions really started hitting hard and i was kind of really deep breathing really long exhaling out so i was still trying to control my breath but it was getting hard and and i said to the midwives okay i want the epidural and they said okay they'll order it and then sort of all of a sudden it was just it became really quite painful like ramped up a lot so i started panicking a bit i said to my husband i'm panicking can we please get the midwife i'm worried i've like i'm worried i've left it too late i didn't say it in those words there may have been some other words um anyway so we i said and i want to get out of the bath like i hate this but i don't know what else to do anyway so midwives came over i was like please get the epidural asap and then i got out of the bath walked over to the bed leant on the bed and that's when i could feel this huge pressure just right there and i was like saying i think i was like oh my god i've left it too late i don't want to do this which is classic signs of transition they you know everyone's like i don't want to do this anymore blah 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 and in my head i was like oh no like 
I knew that the epidural take took like half an hour for the person to arrive and then a while for it to work and I'm like oh no like I'm gonna have to go through this pain for all this time before the epidural comes I've mistimed it and I was like really kicking myself phone's ringing I'll tell you what this video hang on then what happened where was I oh yes okay so the midwife obviously looked at me, could hear me and realized I was at transition and she said, hop up on the bed and we'll check you. So I waited till that contraction subsided, got up on the bed, she checked me, she said, you're fully dilated, you're... Hello? She said, your baby's going to be here soon. Um, I... Because of my past experience, I had a little, I was sort of like, but what if it's not, what if it's not going to be here soon? They said that last time and then he got stuck. What if I have to do this for an hour and, and I could have got the epidural, but I didn't. And the other midwife was like, the anaesthetist, anaesth anaesth I cannot say this word. The person who does the epidurals is right at the door. Um, they you know they can come in if you want to and then but but your baby is going to be here soon and you know he's right there I can feel his head and I said to the midwife can I push and she's like yes you can push now on the next contraction so I guess I just made that decision in that second um well if they're saying he's going to be here soon and she said your baby's going to be here in 15 minutes in actual fact it was five minutes so so from the time in the shower that my contractions started ramping up to the time he arrived um, my husband says was about half an hour so the actual pain the contractions did come on really uh, quick and hard and fast with the induction yes it came out of nowhere but i was already in the hospital um i got to arrive at the hospital in a calm fashion <laughs> like i just got to walk in there calmly in the morning and ease into it and especially with having the waters broken and leaving it to see if that worked and then doing the drip like it was just very calm in that sense um so anyway i was on the bed i said should i get on the floor and like to stand up because i you know read all this stuff about you know standing up letting like gravity help you and lying your back being the worst way to to be in labor but the midwife said uh you could but i don't know i actually don't know what she said but for whatever reason she recommended staying where i was so we did and that was fine um i had and this was so amazing for my first birth because of it was vacuum delivery and all this stuff there was like a few midwives several doctors student doctors so many people in that room just staring at me with my legs in stirrups but with this delivery there was literally my husband here and two midwives it was very like intimate and exactly what i wanted i didn't want heaps of people there anyway so i i had my legs up and i was like bearing my legs against one midwife each which which was really helpful to be able to like push against them as opposed to just having your legs up free in stirrups or whatever they were like telling me to push against them and yeah i just started pushing and i think probably i don't know exactly but i think it was probably three or four contractions until he his head came out and i was just like deeply pushing into my bum as they tell you to do and and then they'd sort of say okay push a little bit push a, just a little push because they were trying to like minimize tearing and stuff like that um so i the pushing part felt i don't want to say good because it hurt like the stretching hurt it felt like rip it felt like tearing it stung i finally understood the ring of fire thing i didn't get that with my first i think oh they numbed the area because they had to do an episiotomy to do the vacuum so i didn't feel that ring of fire thing definitely felt it this time it was like um but the actual like 
bearing down and pushing part was such a relief compared to just experiencing contractions in labor where you're not pushing it's a relief to be able to like push not a relief in like a oh this feels fantastic thing but certainly better than the alternative anyway so i pushed and if, you know his head came out and um after his head came out i guess ugh, i was panicking a little bit at one point i can't remember and the midwife was just like alex alex look at me look at me i want you to say this i want you to say i've got this and i said i've got this and yeah i think that was before his head came out actually because i was panicking about the time when she said your baby will be here by quarter past and it was only three i was like 15 minutes like you want me to do it like I couldn't believe I had to do it for even 15 minutes, you know. Anyway, so his head came out and then they were like, do you want to touch his head? And I was like, yes, no, I didn't. Kind of wish I did, but that's okay. And then I guess once that happens, you kind of are just are like, okay, the head's out. I, I really do have this. And next push, I think I did like a big push and then a couple more sub quick pushes maybe without a contraction I don't know anyway he came out he was there and it was just like such relief and um they had to sort of like give him a little pat and a sort of tap and whatever to get him crying but it didn't take very long at all and then yeah I was just like couldn't believe that I had done it <laughs> and I held him and I got to hold, hold him for a very long time um we did the delayed cord clamping they didn't take him away to have to do anything to him um which had happened with my first because he needed some air so it was just kind of like yeah it happened really quickly and it was great <laughs> great it wasn't great it was it was really painful but all in all it was a really positive induction experience like so much better than i could have imagined i felt like really in control of the situation most of the time and i liked how it happened and even though i asked for the epidural and it didn't happen um i'm i'm actually i'm so grateful that it didn't happen and i felt that way really quickly after his arrival because all along I just wanted to experience a natural delivery in a positive way and I didn't want those drugs in me, I didn't want the risks for myself or baby and I got to experience, I say natural labour, obviously I had the induction so it's not quite natural but um, natural in the sense of like drug free pushing the baby out, that was natural. Um, so yeah, it was a, a positive experience for me. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about what happened afterwards. I think about he, he fed and then sometime later, I want to say maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, um, the midwife noticed that Jace was breathing really quickly and she, uh, they, they took him to the, um, the nursery, like the intensive care just to check him out and then one of those nurses came and told me that his sugars were really low, um, probably related to my gestational diabetes, and they wanted to give him some formula just to stabilize things. And I, I was like, yes, yes, do whatever you have to do. But I wasn't worried. I did, like, I didn't feel worried about it at all. So then, um, yeah, we just, I, um, the midwife and Lindsay helped me to the shower. Uh, I forgot to say actually, with the delivery of the placenta, I had a lot of pain afterwards, after delivering Jace, just from afterbirth contraction pain, which was, I didn't have with my first because I guess I had the injection or something. Anyway, that was a bit, that was quite painful, but I delivered the placenta and that relieved a bit of it. Um, and then once Jace went to the nursery, um, I had a shower and just freshened up a bit. And then we went to see him. I gave him another feed, pumped. Um, then Lindsay had to go because 
we wanted he, we wanted Lindsay to go home to be with Dad. We had to relieve um, our babysitter and yeah. So Lindsay went home. I stayed with Jace a bit and expressed, um, which, and then I felt really lightheaded and had to be like reclined and given some lemonade in the, in that nursery room. And then Jace went to sleep and I went back to my room. So Jace spent the first night in the nursery, which honestly was wonderful. Um, I know that they say like the baby should spend the, the, all the time with the mum, but to be honest with you, it was great for my mental health because I got to s sleep. The midwives came and woke me up when it was time to feed him through the night. I'd go and cuddle him and feed him, then he would fall asleep and we'd put him down and he'd be asleep. So honestly, I don't feel like his well-being was compromised in any way like that. And I got to go back and sleep and it was wonderful to be able to sleep. So I was th went through a public hospital, which I am all for because I love the, the midwife care. Um, I did have to share a room this time, which I didn't have to last time, which wasn't wonderful. But at the same time, I did get to, to chat with the lady next to me. So it was kind of nice to have company. There would have been no room for Lindsay to stay, even if he wanted to, he would have had to stay in like a chair. Whereas with Jed, we had a private room. Um, but uh, yeah, I think with the coronavirus restrictions and stuff, there were certain limitations anyway. Um, so that was really good for the first night. And um, I have to say the afterbirth pains for the first two, three days were really intense. I had to breathe through those and be on pain medication to help with that. I didn't have that with, with Jed, which is quite common not to have it with you first. Um, the second night, uh, the second day, so J uh, Jace was discharged from the, uh, the nursery the next day at two o'clock and he came in with me. Um, and he spent the second, I was hoping to go home that day, but it didn't happen because he had to stay for like 24 hours due to having to go to the ICU. Anyway, the second night he was pretty unsettled which is really common um for for babies and so i kept I, I would feed him and then put him in his little crib and he would just cry and not want to be there so i had this lovely nurse come in and she was an older nurse and i was like propped up on the bed with him sleeping on me because i just resigned to the fact that i was going to have to s sleep sitting up that night and they had like posters on the wall saying no co-sleeping blah 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 because it, it can be dangerous but this lovely nurse said to me would you like i'm not supposed to say this but would you like me to put up the other rail and i was like yes please that would be wonderful so she put up for the both rails and i reclined the bed then and i just had jed swaddled oh, sorry jace has swaddled next to me but i was like safely distanced from him but it was it was it was fine and it was actually the loveliest thing in the world to have him sleeping on the bed next to me we we never did that with jed um partly because we didn't have to we were both in the hospital so we tag teamed holding him through that second difficult night and then at home we just never wanted we didn't want to risk like put him at risk because it is known to be dangerous um, so we never did it, but being in the hospital by myself and needing sleep, I just didn't feel like I had another choice. So we had, I, I got a couple of hours sleep and through the night and then a few more in the morning. He slept so well on the bed next to me and honestly, it was the most beautiful, lovely experience to have that and I'm so glad that I did. Um, yeah, so all in all, it was fine being in the hospital by myself as well and Lindsay would come and um, come in the day and go back to Jed and, and whatnot. So I ended up being in the hospital for two nights and we got to go home the next day, the afternoon, late afternoon. The discharge process was really long winded, but um, it was okay. I, yeah, I really missed Jed and I had a lot of like mum guilt about not being home with him, but 
it just happened that way and it all worked out fine so things are going really well at home uh the transition from one to two children has definitely been far and away far and away easier for us than zero to one um i guess a lot of that is that we just know what we're doing more this time you know we've 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 done it before we know that even though there are difficult times they do pass and um i don't know we just have a better handle on it so we're we're really happy and in, enjoying enjoying the time with our new new little guy who's so cute and just lovely really chill um jed is being really doting towards him really caring really helpful i did have a really quite teary afternoon on day three when my milk came in um just that flood of hormones is quite intense and i have been struggling a little bit with how big jed seems now compared to jace and just grown up all of a sudden and it sort of feels like you i went away to hospital and um he's no longer my baby and that has been a little hard emotionally to deal with and it has, has been a little hard to deal with um like dividing my time between the two if jace is asleep in my arms and i feel like i want to savor that time but then i want to give my attention to jed to make sure he knows that he still has my attention so it is a juggling act and it's a juggling act while lindsay is on paternity leave so i am a little anxious about when he's not going to be on leave but we'll just tackle that like every other family in the history of the world has tackled it and it'll be fine but yeah all in all um i have to say that the experience for me was definitely positive um i loved the hospital that i was at um i loved the midwives they were they were wonderful the induction experience was way less way less scary than i had built up in my head and it was also just great to be able to go to the hospital feeling in control and normal rather than being at home and uh, laboring while having a toddler at home and sort of second guessing when I needed to go in and you know how early do I go in like and having to drive there in labor and just arrive and make decisions about things when you're already in pain like it was just the positive healing experience that i needed and i'm so grateful that it happened that way so if you've made it to the end of this video thank you so much much for watching i hope you enjoyed this and i hope if you are watching this um in preparation for your own birth that you that you do feel positive after watching this and that um me saying you know it was isn't a negative thing for you because you're pushing a child out of your body it's not going to feel great but that doesn't mean that the experience as a whole can't be positive and so empowering so yes i hope that you can take something away from that as well Thank you for watching the video and um, I don't know when I'm going to be recording other things. Obviously going to have my hands full and wanting to give both boys all my time and attention. But um, I'm sure there'll be time for little things. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.